So here we are inside of Blender, inside of the EV Studio, but we're going to create our own today. So let's go ahead and open up Blender. I'm just going to do File, New, General. And let's go ahead and save this. This is a very important step. Save it as, and I just have a Blender folder here, and just call it EV Studio. Go ahead and hit save. And we're gonna check in our tab over here to the right. It's the second tab. It looks like the back of a DSLR camera. Click on that and make sure your render engine is set to EV. And EV is our real-time render engine. So just make sure you have it set there. And the next thing we wanna do is just zoom out a little bit and let's create a backdrop. So do shift A and do mesh and we're gonna make a plane and we need it to be pretty large. So let's just do maybe like a thousand. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then let's rename this, instead of plane, let's call it background. You can call it backdrop, you know, everything, anything you want. And then let's add a color or material to it. So just click on this material tab, make sure you have your background selected and we're going to click on the plus sign and do new and then just click in here where it says material one and type background color. And you can make it any color you want, you know, red, blue, and we can't see it. So let's go ahead and flip into Eevee. So just make sure you have Eevee turned on and there we go. We're getting some color and I like it white, but you know, we're going to, we can change it later any color we want in the future, but white is good for now. And since the background is technically part of our studio, let's just let's just go ahead and grab the background and drag it into the studio collection. There we go. And we're kind of cutting off uh, Suzanne's face, so let's grab Suzanne or your object there and just hit G and Z and bring it up just a little bit just so we can see it there. And we haven't talked about it much, but we have our camera still, or hopefully you have a camera. If you don't, uh, make sure you have studio selected and do shift A and add a camera. Uh, but you should still have one in there from our very, very, very first lesson. So click on uh, your camera and then hit zero on your numpad. And we're actually like inside of the camera. You can see this yellow little uh, window here. And that's kind of like we're looking through a film camera or a photo camera. And there's a few ways that you can move the camera around. So if I orbit, notice like that window has disappeared. So let's hit zero again. And if you go to your information panel and go to view, you should see somewhere in the middle, it may be twiddled down, but you should see something that says view lock and it says lock camera to view. So if you click that, this is option one. This is one way you can look around is lock your camera to the view. And when you move your view around, the camera will follow. So that's one way to move your camera around. And then option two, the way that I like to do it is just leave that unchecked and hit shift tilde on your keyboard. Uh, tilde is right below the escape key on the top left of your keyboard. So shift tilde and your mouse will kind of turn into like this little crosshair here. And now we're kind of like in game mode. So if you're a gamer, this is should feel pretty comfortable uh, just looking around with your mouse. And then if you hit W, A, S, D on your keyboard, any of those, it's kind of like your arrow keys. You can even use your arrow keys if you want um, to move your view around. And if it's going way too fast or too slow, you can actually scroll up on your mouse wheel or scroll down and that will increase or decrease the speed. So, you know, you kind of can just float around in uh, your virtual space. And if you want to kind of lift up or drop down uh, or boom, I should say, you can hit Q or E and that will let you kind of float up or float down. So that's one way you can just get in there and move your camera, you know, depending on what you want to do. But I'm going to just set mine right here in the center kind of pretty much where we had it. But I just wanted to show you a few different ways that you can move your camera uh, because this lesson's all about making a cool shot of your render. So you should definitely know how to move your camera if we're gonna do that, right? So once you've got the camera kind of in a place that you are proud of or that you like, uh, just click and there you go, you've moved your camera. The next thing we're gonna do is mess with our background. If you click on the background, uh, notice it kind of just falls off in the back there. We've kind of got a gray sky and a white background, but I want it to curve up, kind of like we're in a fancy, expensive uh, 
Photo Studio. So just make sure you have your background layer selected and then hit tab to go into edit mode. And if we go into edge mode or just hit two on your keyboard, let's grab that back um, line or edge right there and just hit E to extrude. And we're gonna lock it to the Z and then type a thousand, one zero zero zero. And that should give us a nice like huge psych wall. That should give us plenty of room uh, you know, for our camera and everything. So now we've got a nice psych wall, but it's still got this hard edge in the corner. Uh, but what we want is to have it kind of curve really softly and make like this infinity wall effect that you may have seen in like professional photos or something. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back into object mode. We've still got the background selected and we'll go to our modifiers and add you guessed it, a bevel modifier. And for the, uh, the parameters in here, just go ahead and switch it to percent and maybe increase it to like 25 or 30%. I'm gonna do 30. There we go. And nothing's really happened because we need to add some segments. So just crank up your segments, maybe to like, you know, 12, we'll say. And it still looks pretty good. If I scroll over here, you can kind of see some little steppy steps happening where you see kind of like a, you know, you can kind of see where the segments are. So to get around that, since we're just rendering it, um, you know, we're not gonna be 3D printing this backdrop. So a trick you can do for rendering is just right click and say shade smooth. And you gotta be in object mode to do that. So make sure you're in object mode, right click the background and do shade smooth and boom, looky there. The background is now smooth. So now we've got a smooth background, let's add or mess around with our lights a little bit. If we zoom out, notice we've got one, two, three lights up here. Um, and if you don't have any lights, um, shame on you, you should from the first lesson, but if you don't, no problem, just do Shift A and add a light right here and you wanna do area. Uh, but ours are already set up here for area. So we're just gonna rock and roll with these bad boys. And if you changed it from area to some other type of light, all you have to do is just click on the light, go to the light properties here, and inside there under the light uh, drop down, you can do you can just switch them to point, sunshine, spotlights, or area. So make sure you have it on area. And what we're gonna do is change the size of all of our lights because mine are like super duper tiny. So let's just change that to like 300 by 300. And there we go, we've got this nice huge square right there. And we'll do the same thing for the other ones. So light area, 300 by 300. And the top one here, 300 by 300. And you can kind of see that we set up the light, um, you know, for just for everyday modeling. But for this, we're gonna get a little more fancy. So let's take the top light and go to item on the information panel. And let's just reset this rotation we can just say, you know, zero tab, zero tab, zero tab. And there we go, we've got it here. And maybe hit G and Y to just kind of line it up with our, the top of our uh, little grid here, just so it's right above our design. And then we may bring it down on the Z axis, like maybe just do 150. Yeah, just somewhere in there. So it's kind of nice and even on our, on our model there. And we can even hit zero to go in there. Okay, cool, got some nice lighting. So let's go back. And we're gonna do something kind of similar for our side lights, but we're just gonna put them on the side here. So let's reset the rotation. And like we've done before, you can just click and drag on the, the X there and do zero. And then let's rotate this on the Y 90 degrees so that uh, you know it's pointing that way. You can see this little dot here. And then just move that um, you know, we can even just zero it out here. Bring it up 150 and to the X 150. There we go. And that puts the light right on the side there. And we're gonna do the same thing, but the opposite for here. So just zero out all the rotation. And for the X, Y, and Z, we're gonna zero that out. And let's do Z 150 to bring it up. And then for rotation, we're gonna do negative 90 
on the Y. And we can even push it over on the X, negative 150. And there we go. So we've kind of created like a little box almost. Uh, we can even bring this up. Maybe take your your uh, the top light there and we can even do 300. There we go. So we've kind of created like this box of lights around our, our item there. So hit zero and notice we've got a pretty cool look there. And I may zoom in just a little bit because I can kind of see uh, where the light is falling off. If you turn your overlays, you can kind of see like a hard line right there. So let's just turn that off and then do shift tilde and W and just kind of zoom in right there until we got our model. Yeah, perfect. And right now, if we look at the lights on the light panels, everything is set, let's see, this one's set at one for the power. That's our top one. And then our two sides are set for half of that. But let's do it a little, let's change the third one uh, to be a little less intense. So maybe type in 0.25 for uh, one of your side lights there. And that will be just, you know, our top light is really strong. Our One of our side lights is half of that intensity. And then one of the other sides is a quarter of that. So we kind of have like a little bit of a basic uh, three-point lighting. So if I turn all my lights off, you can see there's no lights. We've got our top light doing kind of like the Godfather look. <laughs> then we've got one light that's... Uh, shining from the side and then we've got another one coming a little softer from the other side and you can play with these just to get different looks um, but that's just kind of a basic simple three-point lighting uh, technique that we can use so if we zoom out that is our basic ev studio setup we're going to do a lot more and get pretty creative in this one so let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson where we're going to add your designs into the studio so make sure you save and let's go into the next lesson.